part-time time travelers, Jacob here with another video for Woodward TV. And today we're talking about something that I thought was a fever dream, to be honest. Now, growing up in the early 2000s in Canada, YTV was the best network for kids' TV. I would come home every day and start their after-school lineup of Fairly Odd Parents, SpongeBob, and then we'd get into some of their original programming. This included Uh-Oh. Now time to bring on The Punisher. Yeah. Yeah, look at Randy Orton slithering. Watch out, watch out, watch out, watch out! If you don't know about Uh-Oh, check out Amanda the Jedi's amazing video about it. My absolute favorite, Prank Patrol, which if you haven't seen it, you gotta watch it and watch Curtis Connors' very funny video on it. There was Mystery Hunters, you know, Cryptids and Ghosts for Kids. There was Ghost Trackers, another Ghosts for Kids show. There was the Kid American Idol, The Next Star. I'm coming out. I want the world to know. But no one seems to talk about the Kid Amazing Race TV show in real life. I know that you remember this. If you were a kid that grew up in the early 2000s in Canada, you know what in real life is. Now this show is absolutely bonkers. It popped up in my head recently and I thought I just have to watch it for the nostalgia. And I found it uploaded to YouTube, recorded off a different app. It is so hard to find. Uh, but thank you to the uploader for bringing me the nostalgia. And I was watching it and these little memories trickled back. So I was really excited. But then I realized this show is insane. And instead of just telling you why it's insane, I think me and you should take a little journey back to 2009 and watch the first episode of this absolutely bonkers wild banana show. So of course the show is hosted by the queen, Sabrina Jalice. Sabrina was only 23 here. She seemed so much older when I was a kid, but looking back now, I'm older than Sabrina is in this episode. And that's just wild. You could tell Sabrina was like, what did I just sign up for when they just told her to host away? This is the very beginning of the episode. You brought nine girls and nine boys from across the country together. They're just like you, except they're about to take part in real world challenges that are guaranteed to change their lives. Who will be the ultimate winner? She's giving Nathan Fielder, but in the best way possible. A little of a jittery start, but Sabrina, you're gonna do fine, queen. Another uh, fun thing before we move on, did you catch that it's in the real world there? Yeah, this entire season, they were operating under the pretense that this show was called In the Real World. And sometime during editing, they found out there was another show called The Real World on MTV that ran for years, and they probably couldn't get the rights. Every time In the Real World is shown, it cuts really quick, which is really difficult because all the finish lines say In the Real World on it, all the clipboards say In the Real World on it. They spent so much on branding and advertising just for the title to not be available to them or to be too expensive. Which just adds to the charm of this season one new adventure that no one's ever heard of. But the show begins at the Atlanta Motor Speedway where Sabrina brings in all the kids that are gonna be competing this year. The kids are what makes it an awesome show. And if any of you are watching this video, it's number one, I'm sorry you have to relive this. 2009 is a cringe year for everyone around our age and I'm sorry I'm digging up the, out of this dirt. Number two, please contact me and let me interview you. I want to know everything. I'm being serious. If you were on this show, uh, text me, uh, message me, all of the information below. Sabrina, you're included. <laughs> so Sabrina delivers the premise of the show, which is basically 13 wild adventures where the kids will get eliminated until there is one left but they will be competing in teams. The first team is Graham and Tyler. They introduce a cool game mechanic like the shield. This is the shield and it's been placed somewhere along your route today. If you present me with this bad boy at the finish line, you can use it to escape elimination. Which sounds good in concept, but as you'll see as the season progresses, they are really hard to find, but it does cause drama. Uh, just hang tight. But before we meet all the wonderful contestants, we have to get to the banger intro. <laughs> the 
this is one of the best theme songs I ever heard. It gets me in the mode. It makes me want to get out into the real world. I mean, in real life. Just listen to this. Sabrina then sends them all on their first task, which is to find the last flag flown at the end of a race. Everyone scatters, and this is where we start to meet some of the contestants, and it is no secret who production's favorite is. And my favorite growing up, can you guess? I'm wearing red, he's on the red team. It's this little guy, Aaron, which he's like 12, 13, but he's just really small. I am Aaron Landro. I play tier one soccer, and through 4-H, I show goats, cows, I'm involved in welding and woodworking, and I'm on the woodsman and tug of war team. Everyone knows an Aaron because Aaron will do anything, including trying to hop the fence in the very first episode. He's jumping the fence! <laughs> Let's keep going. Aaron! What are you doing? He's a talker, he has an accent, he is determined, he will probably beat you in a foot race, and bite your ankles at a sleepover. Jumping over fences doesn't work unless we've discussed that, okay? Okay, yeah. He's a little ginger and my favorite contestant from 2009. We also meet some great characters like this King Jesse. Yeah, I can be dramatic, it's fun. Ever since I was really little, I have watched some reality TV shows. I really think they're interesting and it's so much fun watching people just go at it. I'm not the fastest runner, I'm not the strongest person but I like to win. Who is born for reality TV? Jesse, are you still around? You need to get on more reality TV shows. Did you see how you talked to the camera there? You've been new. I bet you still watch all the shows in 2023. Another thing that's really funny about these intros is all these kids give their full government names to the camera in 2009. Hi, my name is Carly Sierra Martha Gomez. This is wild. Like. Big Brother doesn't even do this. You have to search online for their last names. And these kids, these minors, <laughs> are just laying it all. I know the internet was just coming in in 2009, but this is just really funny to me. We get this interesting tidbit from Jesse and Carlise. Very good at working together, and there are teams who are hopefully maybe are bickering and stuff, and we have none of that. You guys just remember that. Just, just remember that. <laughs> Once they find Sabrina, they're all put into order in the places that they came, and they all have to get ready to start go-karting 10 laps around a track. There's some really fun moments mixed in here. Go! Come on, Ruby Ray! Go! Oh! JC are ramming into Tyler and Lilith! We get to meet the Chad of the season, Graham. <laughs> Hi, I'm Graham Prendergast. I'm what I'd like to call a nerd jock hybrid. And his partner, Tyler. I can do physical challenges, but my brain's the bigger part of my body, I guess. They also introduce one of my favorite contestants of the season I didn't expect re-watching the season, and that is Landon. Just because everything that comes out of Landon's mouth is so real, and she got shafted in her intro package. Hi, I'm Landon Loki. I love pushing myself, and I love the feeling of running and being by myself, and it's just the most amazing feeling. She's like, I like to run. Yeah, we're moving on, Landon. Uh, you'll see as we go on how iconic Landon is, but just remember her. The editing is... I love my animals, playing my violin, and I don't get discouraged that easily. I'm Ben Moran. My interests are musical theater, which is singing, acting, and dancing. So dramatic for a 2009 kid show. One. I'm Ben. Sometimes I need to find the drama, like Talon spins out. Talon in a comfortable second place. Oh, he loses control and stops. He was fine. <laughs> Speaking of Talon, this brings me to the yellow team, which is one of the most dynamic teams of the entire season. Talon and Madison, let's meet them. Bit worried about my partner, Madison. Me too. But I'm not worried about I'll make up any difference that comes. 
My name is Talon Leuchter. When I grow up, I want to be in the NHL. Don't know a talent in the NHL, but uh, I'm sure you're doing great, man. Talon's that boy we all knew in the eighth grade. Tries to be the class clown, a little too cool. Gets the first place ribbon in all the track and field events. Sorry, I need a moment. Then we have Madison, which has one of my favorite intro packages. I just do what my heart tells me to do. And if I'm in the moment where I really want to cry, I won't be afraid to cry. If I'm really upset, I will express my anger. If I'm really happy, I'll like jump off a building because I'm so happy. I like to be emotional. I'm not afraid to be. It's okay to cry. Let your emotions run. Madison, that is my motto. So now Green is in first, and they now have to all run to this garage to get their next task. This is where Green starts to fall apart a little bit. Carlitis, wait up! Carlitis, hurry up! So Carlitis is a track star. She can run crazy fast and not get tired. I was pushing myself, and everyone else was probably tired, and they were probably pushing him themselves and he was the only one that wasn't pushing himself. So all the contestants eventually find their way to the next activity. I'm sprinting my butt off over there and he's walking. Which this activity is just overall why this show is so insane because of what they make these 12 to 15 year olds do. Here they'll be car mechanics. Teams need to change the air filter. This is more difficult than it looks. Teams have to do the job properly before they're allowed to move on. Job is done, teams have to push their car out of the garage. Then they'll have to climb in the car and start the engine. What? I'm not a car guy, I don't know how to do that. I could if someone was telling me, but these 12 year olds are just left alone to do it. Yeah, I know, I'm how would we know how to do this? Right, Landon? She's so real. Some just great moments of kids actually driving the NASCARs. Geico, 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on car insurance. So after Jesse and Carlise are literally dying. You're not placing the blame on either person? Not right now. No comment? Alrighty. They're alerted that they have to go get their clue card. Now their clue card will give them the location to their final challenge that they'll have to do. They have to go up into these stands and find the right seat, which is just a really fun challenge, I think. Get to see more of how the team dynamics work and what teams are gonna go far. I can let you know one team that's not gonna go far. You know what, I'm starting to go without you. Here we go, I'm coming. No, you're not, you're gonna walk. If I was in this show, which I wanted to apply and I never did, I got the email saying I should apply. Like, I was that involved with YTV. I would have been eliminated here, because... What is this? The answer is where... Let's go. Cherry pit stop. I don't... What? Cherry pit? Can a 12-year-old explain to me how they would come to that conclusion? And it was a cherry pit, so we figured cherry pit, then pit, pit lane. Oh, thanks, Maddie. No one has spotted the shield yet. Well, Jesse, there it is on the left. Sabrina, Jesse's like four foot seven. He's not gonna see that shield. <laughs> I do appreciate Jesse though for thinking about the shield in this instance, because he's last. If you get it and you present it, the team before you goes home. Jesse's smart here. Carlise is kind of getting a bad edit, but she is so competitive and I see that competitive heart and spirit that we can't fault that. It's a really bad pairing. Jesse's more of an analytical thinker, but also kind of a fun person. And Carlise, you know, she's a runner, she's a track star, and their personalities just did not clash. Or maybe they did a little too well, and that's why the producers put them together. I'm on to you, producers. You wanted this drama. It's just really funny that Carlise tries to just run ahead to Jesse, and Jesse's the one with the clue card in his hand. Slow, no, don't, don't, stop! The answer is where you need to go, we need to figure out what this is! Very good at working together, and there are teams who are hopefully maybe are bickering and stuff, and we have none of that. Kids are so funny. So the final task is a very fun task, because the kids actually get to go into an actual NASCAR car. NASCAR car? and they have to spot three flags. And it's not just one going at a time and they have to guess, like they're all on this track. It's funny how the first few teams are just like, the boys are doing it. This is a boy challenge, especially you, Talon. This is awesome. 
but Isaiah, who's with Landon, Isaiah's such a positive guy. Look at him offering this to Landon. I'm back! Oh, right, you go, you go. Are you sure? Yeah, possibly. Can I have a hug? Yeah, yeah. Oh, go. You can do it. You can do it. Come okay. on. I'm gonna get this is dirty. amazing to me. I love my partner for letting me do this. I appreciate it so much. And same with Ben and Ruby Ray. That's okay. Ruby That's Ray. okay. Ben and Isaiah are kings. Landon and Ruby Ray are both queens. Jesse and Carlise are screwing up here, but Jesse gets the chance to get into the car and catch up a little bit. Talon was first, and when he guessed first, he was absolutely wrong. Red, blue, purple. Blue. Nope, keep going. He probably just going, I'm in a NASCAR. <laughs> Which, by the way, Paul. And you and everyone's like, ooh, and like, it's so loud and intense, you get right into it. Yeah, Paul, you do those sounds better than I do. They're going around, and we get a surprise winners in Jaden and Paige. Little spoiler alert, they, they, they don't do as well the rest of the season. We get a Ben and Ruby Ray early finish, which is going to become very common. Red, blue, black. You got it. Ruby Red. Ray and Ben come in second. And the teams kind of keep coming in. My buddy Aaron powering it through. Guess the right colors. Talon keeps getting it wrong. Red, purple. No. Talon's wrong. And we start to see the downfall of yellow. Talon and Madison having a spectacular fall from first place going into this race. And if I'm in the moment where I really want to cry, I won't be afraid to cry. Even Jesse got the colors. And Talon, the golden yellow boy, is last. Back was wavy, but because it's like silky, weird lighting, it like looks like it changed colors. And I was like, oh man. They don't have a shield, because that shield was freaking impossible to see. They went from first to last. Are they gonna get eliminated? Of course they weren't gonna eliminate kids on the first episode. Get your head out of your ass. This is not one of the experiences where a team gets eliminated. Yes! <laughs> You're all staying. I'm keeping all of them. So Jaden and Paige got a choice, and I actually really like this choice in the TV. Sabrina, explain the choice. You're about to get happier because for winning the auto racing experience, you guys get to choose between two prizes, okay? One is what we call the big reward, and the other one is the wrench, which doesn't sound as cool, but you can actually use it against one of the teams that you choose in the next experience, and it's guaranteed to slow them down. Of course, the kids are all gonna go for the big reward first, but the wrench is gonna show its mean powers in the upcoming episodes. So that brings us to the big reward. What could it possibly be? Check it out. You guys each win an incredibly fast remote control race car to take home. <laughs> That's uh, kind of lame. They blew their budget on NASCAR. It doesn't matter. <laughs> These race cars can go 100 kilometers per hour. So uh, you're going to want to warn your neighbors. Well, that's where episode one ends up. And I think that's where I'm going to leave off this video. I want to do future videos on In Real Life uh, and take a look at episodes two and three together in the next video and maybe go on from there. Two episodes per video. Uh, but, uh, you know, I mean, episode one was a little tame. I mean, I, I don't expect the show to get any more crazy. Like, I mean, what are they going to even do in the next two episodes to warn a video about it? Oh my god. Next time in real life, our challengers become alligator wranglers and take on one of the most dangerous creatures on Earth. The attitude that came with it all. Summer Naturals and others fall apart. No. <laughs> How many NDAs did these children sign? Thanks everyone so much for watching this video. It was really fun to take a trip down memory lane. Uh, as I said, if you were on this show or you were a part of this show in some way, I want to hear from you. Take a look in the description. Uh, I would love to just interview you and learn everything I can about in real life. And we can even go over what you're doing today. I think that's some of the most uh, fun things to discover of uh, what 
you have become since being on the show or being part of the show. I have a lot more videos coming, not just in real life, but uh, more videos tackling the real world that was lame. Just keep an eye out, 2023, this channel's gonna explode with videos and I hope you join me for the ride. Special shout out to my sister Sadie. She watched all the episodes with me and created a lot of the jokes that I said during this episode. Uh, she's just fantastic. I have to give her a partial writing credit here. <laughs> my name is Jacob from Woodward TV and we'll see you next time.